If you are using Apple and iCloud, according to this class action complaint, Apple might just put your private files in danger of being exposed and leaked. With that, Apple got itself into a big scandal when it was revealed that the company was trying to access more information about its clients than anyone thought by using AirTags. And Apple's response to these allegations was something that no one expected. The company offered money to those people who were victims of this conduct. According to Apple, approximately 16.9 million people are qualified for this reimbursement. But the exact amount of each individual payment is different. So let's explain this story and also if you are qualified for reimbursement. According to the class action complaint, the company discreetly kept the data of iCloud members on servers owned by third parties. The free version of Apple iCloud offers 5 gigabytes of storage, but more capacity needs an iCloud Plus membership. Plaintiffs claimed Apple used external servers to store data, but failed to indicate this in its marketing brochures or terms and conditions. In Williams v. Apple, the plaintiffs claimed that Apple violated its own iCloud contract by sharing data across third-party cloud providers, including Amazon Web Services and Microsoft's Azure platform. The plaintiffs claim in their case that Apple falsified the nature of its services and lacked the infrastructure required to run iCloud, instead leasing cloud storage space on other companies' cloud facilities. They assert that if customers had known that Apple wasn't actually supplying storage, they either wouldn't have paid for a membership or they would have expected to pay far less. According to the lawsuit, customers valued having the Apple name as the storage service provider, hence the claim deception allowed Apple to charge more for its iCloud service. Apple stated in documents that its acceptance of the settlement did not constitute an admission of guilt. US citizens who paid for an iCloud Plus membership between September 16, 2015 and 2016 and who have a US mailing address linked to their account are eligible for the reimbursement. Apple estimates that 16.9 million customers are qualified class members. Only 7 of the 20 persons who requested exclusion from the lawsuit throughout the settlement administration procedure had their Apple accounts authenticated. The total payment for the iCloud settlement that was granted in August is $14,800,000.23. However, once lawyers' expenses and administrative expenses are subtracted, the amount that will be distributed to class members will be calculated. The maximum for all fees and expenses associated with the settlement administration tasks to be carried out by the settlement administrator is estimated at $2.4 million in the settlement agreement. The plaintiff's counsel sought $4.93 million in attorney's fees, or one-third of the settlement, but the court only granted them $3.7 million, or 25% of the total sum. Depending on how much storage you purchased, how long you had your membership, and the overall number of claimants, the precise amount of each individual payment varies. But don't count on being able to live off the payout. A monthly iCloud subscription cost between 2015 and 2016 varied from $0.99 cents for 50 gigabytes of storage to $2.99 for 200 gigabytes to $9.99 for one terabyte. Your payment will show up as a refund on your Apple account if you still have an active monthly iCloud Plus membership. In the event that your iCloud subscription ends each month, you will either get a real check in the mail or an online transaction into your bank account. Payments must be made to qualified users in accordance with the provisions of the settlement within 90 days after the final approval on August 4, 2022. However, there can be challenges or objections. According to the settlement lawsuit, payments would be given out as quickly as possible. Apple deceived its loyal users by hiding a tool in software upgrades that slowed users' devices by up to 58% rather than giving a free replacement, repair service, or reimbursement, which was the right and legal thing to do for their customers. Gutman filed this lawsuit in order to compensate millions of iPhone customers in the United Kingdom for the harm caused by Apple's behavior. Apple eventually launched a $29 battery replacement program, similar to the $25 program we've already discussed. Thanks to this program, the company replaced 11 million batteries in 2018, as opposed to the 1 to 2 million that would typically be done annually. As a result, Apple issued its first profit warning since 2002, in January 2019. According to a statement released by Apple on Thursday, they said that they have never, and would never, do anything to intentionally reduce the life of any Apple device or impair the user experience to force consumer upgrades. Making iPhones last as long as possible is apparently a key component of their mission 
to provide products that consumers love, according to their statement, but it seems like they're just saving face. If Apple is defeated, they may be required to compensate the 25 million customers who bought the harmed iPhones with damages totaling more than $950 million. Ouch! You could be eligible to get a portion of that money if you ever bought one of the affected iPhone models, which range from the iPhone 6 to the iPhone X. Following the March 2020 US deal, Apple agreed to resolve a class action lawsuit over the same issue by paying $25 per iPhone, with a maximum payout of $310 million. The UK case is seeking far more money than the two prior claims combined, which comes to roughly $945 million, despite the fact that Apple has already paid over $600 million in damages as a result of its CPU throttling patch. It's clear that customers want big tech corporations to bear more of the accountability for their activities, since lawsuits against them are becoming more common. So, it will be fascinating to see how this develops. The Batterygate lawsuit isn't the only one, though. There's also been a long-running lawsuit against Apple about its Apple Care replacement policies. Customers complained about Apple's strategy of replacing devices through Apple Care that were reconditioned as opposed to new in the lawsuit. Customers complained that offering refurbished devices as replacements went against the conditions of Apple Care, which states that customers should get replacements that are new or equal to new in performance and reliability. Despite agreeing to a $95 million settlement, Apple insisted that it had done nothing wrong. Thankfully, the people who are eligible for the settlement are now receiving notifications for their compensation, which was approved in April. Customers are receiving between $63 million and $68 million from the case, with the remaining money going to attorneys. This one may be over, but there could be another potential lawsuit on the way. Apple may be the target of another prospective antitrust action from the US Department of Justice, this one concentrating on AirTags and other hardware. According to sources cited by Politico, DOG attorneys have started writing up an antitrust case against the tech behemoth. Although these people claim the DOJ was interested in Apple's hardware, there's currently no guarantee the department will proceed with the case. Still worth talking about though, here's some more info. As part of a bigger federal antitrust investigation involving big tech, the DOJ started looking into the iPhone manufacturer in 2019. The agency has so far mostly focused on Apple's tight control over its App Store and developer payment structure. According to reports, the latest possible lawsuit might go farther and focus on years worth of public complaints made by monitoring device vendor Tile against Apple's AirTags. In many cases, AirTags ultra wideband technology and Apple's Find My Network provide a far more precise device location than the earliest Bluetooth-enabled trackers from Tile. Tile claimed in testimony before Congress that by walling off its Find My Network on iOS devices, Apple intentionally affected Tile. The tech giant finally allowed third-party devices to use its Find My Network for location monitoring last year, but only under strict conditions that it would force businesses like Tile to abandon their own software ecosystems in favor of Apple's. Tile, incidentally, decided not to accept this agreement. While Apple has been the target of several lawsuits due to its innovative offerings and business models, it has also brought numerous lawsuits against other businesses. The ones against Samsung that stretched on for years were some of the most famous. Overall, the lawsuits have not stopped or slowed down its success. It has won some and lost some. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time.